This video will demonstrate how to model and design a concrete water holding tank in visual analysis using the ACI 350 design specification. Let's get started. In this example, we will design a circular concrete tank that has a 24 foot radius. The tank can hold 10 feet of water and will also be backfilled with 10 feet of soil. We will also account for a live load surcharge. In this model, two polar grids have already been created, one to draw the concrete slab on grade and another to draw the concrete wall. In this model, five plate elements have already been drawn on the polar grid to create a portion of the concrete wall. The plates are 8 inches thick and have a concrete strength of 5 ksi. Three areas have also been created in this model for the slab on grade. We have a circular area inside of the wall and two semicircular areas outside of the wall. Selecting the areas, we will check the box to generate plates, and we see the thickness for the plates is set to 8 inches and the concrete strength is 5 ksi. We will check the box to create soil springs to support the slab on grade, and we see the subgrade modulus is set to 250 kips per cubic foot. Selecting the five plate elements, we will apply a hydrostatic load in the fluid surface case with a fluid density of 62.4 pounds per cubic feet and a fluid level of 10 feet in the y direction. We will also apply a load to the area inside of the wall. In the earth surface case, we will apply a hydrostatic load to the wall and an area load to the slab outside of the wall to count for the soil pressure. In the live load case, we will apply a uniform load to the wall and to area load outside of the wall for the surcharge. The dead load case will only include the self weight of the structure. With the loads applied to the section of the wall, we can now copy the wall section to create a circular structure. We want to copy both the model objects and the related loads, and we will use a circular pattern. The circular pattern will be about the y-axis, and we will generate 71 copies with a 5 degree spacing between the copies. Clicking the Generate Copies button creates the rest of the plate elements for the wall with the appropriate loads applied to each element. With the loads applied and the modeling complete, we can now set up the load combinations in the load case manager. The two load cases we are interested in are the leak test, where the tank is filled with water prior to backfilling, and the empty tank situation, where the tank is empty and both earth pressure and surcharge is present. Note, in order to use the ACI 350 specification for design, you must analyze the service cases. We will switch to the service case tab to make sure that the service cases are included in the analysis. Now we can switch the results view to see the results for the leak test and the results for the empty tank case. In the design view, we see that the auto-generated plate elements for the three areas are automatically grouped into design meshes for each area. For the plate elements, we will create one mesh for the plates at the bottom of the wall near the slab and another mesh for the plates away from the slab towards the top of the wall. Selecting both design meshes for the walls, we will set the design specification to ACI 350, and we see the minimum steel ratio and the maximum spacing limits are set to walls, and that the minimum steel placement is split between the top and the bottom. The plates are drawn so that their local X axis aligns with the global Y axis, and so that their local Z axis points towards the center of the tank. Therefore, we will set the X bar's vertical parameter to yes and make sure the direction of the X-bars are in the global Y direction. Also, we will set the top cover to 2 inches and the bottom cover to 3 inches since the bottom plates are on the outside of the wall where the soil is present. To make the vertical bars the outer bars, we will make the X-bars the top layer for the top mat and the X-bars the bottom layer for the bottom mat. Starting out, we have number 4 bars at 12 inches on center for all layers of the reinforcement. When the design specification is set to ACI 350, the environmental structure section appears at the bottom of the modified tab. We will set the top exposure to severe for the inside of the tank and the bottom exposure to normal for the outside of the tank. We will assume there are no movement joints for this tank. Now we will select the three design meshes for the slab on grade and we will set the design specification to ACI 350. We see that the minimum steel ratio is set to shrinkage and temperature, and the maximum spacing limits are set to two-way slab, and the minimum steel placement is split between the top and the bottom. 
The local z-axis for the auto-generated plates points in the same direction as the global y-axis, making the top of the plates the top of the slab on grade. Therefore, we will set the top cover to 2 inches and the bottom cover to 3 inches since the bottom of the plates are against the soil. Starting out, we have number 4 bars at 12 inches on center for all layers of the reinforcement. We will set the top exposure to severe for the top of the slab, which is inside the tank, and the bottom exposure to normal for the outside of the tank, which is at the bottom of the slab. Now all we have left to do is optimize the reinforcement. Let's select the top of the wall and click the Design the Mesh button. We will stick to number 4 bars and set the spacing increment to 3 inches. Clicking Optimize, we see that number 4s at 12 inches on center are optimal for the vertical bars, and number 4s at 9 inches on center are optimal for the horizontal bars. We will also optimize the mesh for the bottom portion of the wall. For the horizontal bars, we see that number 4s at 9 inches on center are optimal for both the inside and the outside of the wall. For the vertical bars, number 4s at 12 inches on center are required for the inside bars, and number 4s at 9 inches on center are required for the outside bars. Since the outside vertical bars are spaced at 12 inches on center for the top portion of the wall, it will likely be better to reduce the spacing for the bottom of the wall from 9 inches to 6 inches for constructability purposes. For the slab, we will select the three meshes and set the spacing to 9 inches on center for all layers of the reinforcement. Now we see the model is entirely green and there are no red plates indicating that the model has passed. Note, visual analysis does not design the reinforcement to resist the hoop tension forces or the compression forces, and a warning will appear if these forces are significant. Turning on the flyby information, we can hover over the model to see what limit states are controlling for the design. For the top of the wall and the slab on grade, the minimum steel controls. For the bottom of the wall, the flexor controls for the leak test. Double clicking on this portion of the wall produces a report for this design mesh. When the ACI 350 design specification is chosen, visual analysis automatically performs both the serviceability and strength checks for the plate elements. For our case, the serviceability limit controls since the code reference in the report points us to the section of the ACI 350 that discusses the maximum stresses that are allowed in the reinforcement for environmental concrete structures. In just a few minutes, we have used visual analysis to model this hydraulic structure and design it according to the ACI 350 code requirements for environmental engineering concrete structures. If you would like to design a similar structure and you do not have visual analysis, head over to our website and download the free trial. Thanks for watching and have a great day.